Welcome everyone to this battle between Levan Pansulai on your screen and Magnus Carlsen. This is the FIDE World Cup 2023 and we are in round number 2. Magnus got a bye in the first round and he is playing against the Georgian Grandmaster. As always, Magnus adjusts his pieces. Look at the time he takes to put each and every piece on the central square. It's a classical game with 90 minutes plus 30 seconds increment and after 40 moves you get an additional 30 minutes. So the players have a lot of time to think and that's the reason why we're going to get a very intense game. In this commentary we'll be breaking down the moves of both these players. Off we go. Levan with the white pieces, what is he going to begin with? He goes with knight to f3. This is known as the reti system and it can also transpose to many different openings. Magnus also keeps it flexible. He brings his knight out to f6 and asks Levan, what is your plan? Are you going for d4? Are you going for g3? Or are you going for c4? c4 it is. Levan goes for c4. This is now somewhat in English opening territory. Now for Magnus many options here you can choose the e6 d5 setup you can go g6 he goes for b6 Queens Indian you know generally when you put your bishop on b7 that's the Queens Indian setup so Magnus has played his pawn up to b6 and Levan meets it with g3 so now when the bishop will come here the other bishop will also go on this diagonal to counter it so Magnus goes now oh g6 it's the double fianchetto you have put your pawn on g6 b6 both your bishops will be on the long diagonal this is also known as hypermodern play why is it called hypermodern because let's just see a couple more moves bishop b7 he develops his bishop now levan maybe will take more space in the center here Magnus always keeps a lot of water next to him, keeps himself hydrated and now see, white has taken the center control. So this is known as classical way of playing, you know, control the center. And what Magnus is doing is, he's put his bishop here and he's going to put his other bishop on this square, bishop to g7. And this is why it's called hypermodern because you're not controlling the center with your pawns. You are doing so with your pieces. Castles by white. And Magnus also will most likely castle. Yes, he does. So before committing his C pawn, D pawn and E pawn, Magnus has finished his development. Of course, this is early days in the opening. But right now, white has a very small edge because of the center control. By the way, did you guys notice Magnus has actually cut his hair? In fact, for this event, he's come very uh, well groomed. He's cut his hair and uh, looks very smart. Okay. How should black continue now? Do you want to play e6? Do you want to go d6? Do you want to play c5? But, you know, c5, d5, the bishop would be closed. So, there are several options. You can see Levan Pansulai has moved away from his table. It shows that he's confident out of the opening. Magnus takes a bit of time and pushes his pawn to e6. His idea now could be eventually to play his pawn up to d5 in the center. That's what he may want to do. And he's also gotten up from the chair. So right now there are no players on the board. That, hope, that happens sometimes in chess games. Now Levan comes back and he sees that Magnus has pushed his pawn to e6. How should white react now few few options are knight c3 and also queen c2 but when you go knight c3 and you want to play e4 black will go knight e4 and so levan first goes for the move bishop f4 and in a way he's delaying the development of his knight here because now if you play knight e4 that sometimes can be met with knight d2 in order to put pressure here so there is no longer a knight to capture on c3. So these are little nuances in the opening. d6 played here by Magnus. 
and Magnus choosing a very different setup. He wants to go perhaps knight d7, maybe put his queen on e7 and then break with either c5 or e5. Queen c2 played. Maybe somewhere he wants to play e4. So if Magnus is not very careful, let's say he goes knight d7, already now knight c3 and e4 gives white a very sizable edge. c5 played. I like this move now. Now you will see that the queen has moved away. d5 is no longer possible. He hits the center with c5. Levan takes it. Question to all of you. Do you take with the b pawn or do you take with the c pawn? What is a better way to continue here? One move is superior to the other and Magnus instantly takes it with the b pawn. Notice how he's okay with the weakness on d6 because he knows that it is temporarily weak. Later, he can push it to d5. A good move now, I feel, is rook d1. Because this kind of forces black to go back knight e8. And the rook is still on f8. It gets a little cramped in here. So, Levan should maybe find this move rook d1 and put pressure on d6. He's thinking a bit. He has 1 hour 19 minutes. Magnus has 1 hour 23 minutes. And... Uh, he plays the move knight to c3. But with this move, perhaps it gives Magnus the chance to finish and coordinate, finish his development and coordinate his pieces. You see Magnus goes queen e7. I like this move. With this move, what he's doing is he's going to put his rook on d8. And then if there's further attack on d6, he'll then go knight e8. When the knight does not block the rook, which is why I felt that instead of knight c3, rook d1 would have been more accurate. Never mind. These are little nuances in the opening. We are still completely fine. He brings the rook to d1. Levan Pansulai, he attacks here. He wants to provoke Magnus into playing e5. It, which would be a terrible move because after bishop g5, the d5 square is very weak. For now, in order to defend this pawn, Rook d8 would be the correct move and this is exactly what Magnus does. He defends his pawn on d6. How should white now continue? Can he put more pressure on the d6 pawn? Yes, there are ways actually to, to put pressure. You can go queen d2 and that's exactly what Levan does. He plays queen d2. You know, sometimes you hope that the world champion sort of gets a little bit worried and plays a move like e5. But I feel that's not what Magnus is going to do here. He is going to put his knight back to e8. Yes, he does. Knight back to e8. Very logical move. Defending the pawn on d6 with his knight. It does feel right now that black is a little bit passive. But what Magnus essentially wants is to get his knight out to c6 where it is well placed and eventually if he gets d5 break at the right time he would be more than happy goes bishop to h6 so levan says look magnus your dark squares around the king are a little weak so if i trade these bishops it would be good for me bishop h8 keeping the bishops makes quite a bit of sense but then white has more space and can press with h4 so Magnus has to decide, you know, you don't want to trade the bishops here. Um, he has to think what is the way in which he continues or maybe he can trade the bishops, but then white would get these dark squared weaknesses to play against. He's taking his time. Look at that focus by Magnus there. And he brings his knight out to c6. In classical chess, you will notice how the players make their moves very slowly in the opening, even on the board. And bishop takes g7 by Pansulai, Magnus takes back with the king. For white also now, it's not so easy to make progress. He's got everything developed. And he may want to go e4, maybe with the idea of e5. But what e4 does, it does weaken the d4 square. And so such moves have to be made with great care in the position. Any committal move can backfire against 
a player of Magnus's caliber, B3 play. Again, a solid move, but with a with an idea that maybe the queen goes to B2 and looks at the king on the long diagonal. That could be the idea of this move, to play queen B2. It's important to see how Magnus now unravels very slowly. Firstly, the idea is now to push the pawn to d5. But how do you prepare it? Because right now if you do it, you will simply lose the pawn. Knight takes d5 and white would be winning. So he first gets his knight to f6 and now he's preparing to push the pawn to d5. Levan brings his queen to b2. Logical move is now this is pinned here and i think for magnus a uh, very very simple would be to just bring his king out of this pin king g8 makes a lot of sense yes he plays it king g8 played the game has been very well matched until now we are on move number 17 rook d2 played by levan he wants to double his rooks on the d file and put pressure on the d6 pawn and you can see Magnus pushing his pawn to d5 he has pushed his pawn to d5 and he's asking Levan what do you want to do now Levan plays his pawn up to e3 because if he didn't do that there were ideas of pushing your pawn to d4 so he plays e3 and he tells Magnus that I'm okay with uh, this setup and so Magnus now has to decide whether he wants to by the way push the pawn to d4 it's not a great idea to do that the pawn could become a weakness much better is to simply take on c4 and that is what Magnus does he takes on c4 Levan thinking for a bit but I think it makes sense to just take the pawn back b takes c4 and he captures it he takes it here now both the c pawns are slightly weak who's going to attack it first is the question there's a feeling that Magnus already has his next move prepared he goes knight a5 and Magnus says I'm the first one to get here I'm attacking the c4 pawn it's a weakness which I'm going to latch on to Levan takes the rook rook takes rook now one way to defend is to play knight d2 it's a slightly passive move here and defending here but I think Levan wants to play a more active way and he goes knight e5 Although this does come with its own drawbacks now because the knight is not very stable on this square on e5. The knight does defend c4 but could become a problem eventually. Magnus chops off the bishop on g2 and king takes g2. Okay, now notice the position carefully and think about what the next move ought to be for Magnus Carlsen. He plays his queen to c7 and he's telling Levan, I'm attacking your knight and if your knight moves, your c4 pawn will drop. So the only way in which you can kind of not lose material is to move your knight on c3. But where should the knight go? Knight b5 is a very natural move and actually this is the best move in the position but then there are tactical possibilities with queen b7 check and a6 so that's why Levan goes for a very unusual move rook d1 and you will see that Magnus pauses a bit while writing the move because there could be some tactical ideas now the point is you can't take the knight because your rook is hanging and if you take the rook here then knight takes rook and then the queen defends the knight on e5. So rook takes rook is played by Magnus. Knight takes and now I would like you to pause this video and think what is this amazing move that Magnus came up with. It's really a very little move 
but a very power packed one and i i'm really uh, amazed with this next move that magnus comes up with ooh queen d6 now why is this move so powerful see firstly the knight cannot move c4 is falling this knight actually is run out of squares if you go to c3 it blocks the queen's path here and if you move the queen to defend this knight then the e5 knight falls so actually this move little queen d6 move has put white under so many so much trouble you can see levan's time right now is 43 minutes he's thinking for, about what to do but it's not so simple his plan but there is a possibility you know you can actually play and now his time is down to 26 minutes you can play a move like h3 and it might seem very foolish what are you doing aren't you simply dropping the knight here but the point is after let's say h3 queen takes d1 queen b8 check king g7 and then queen takes a7 attacks the knight and also the f7 pawn so that gives white a clearly winning advantage here so that's the reason why actually magnus move does not have a threat as yet here he doesn't have a threat to take but it's still something you know you're putting pressure here you are making your opponent react also when you are facing magnus you are a bit stressed out so levan taking his time and now i think finally he has to make a move cuz he he has to play on the 15 moves in the next 26 minutes which is not so simple the real option really looks like you know making some kind of an improving move h4 h3 maybe e3 no he goes knight to f3 and his point is if you take here on d1 i'm going to take the knight on f6 magnus returns to his chair and he's thinking whether he should take the knight or not but isn't that losing a pawn yes he takes it windy windy one first now levan must take the knight on f6 he does so but now c4 pawn this is falling i think the reason why levan went into this variation magnus takes it he takes the pawn he went into this variation is hoping that he can somehow launch an attack against these pawns with knight g5 perhaps he plays e4 first which is important because if you went knight g5 check first of course queen d7 is possible but so is queen d5 check and so with e4 he has stopped the queen from coming here and now magnus plays another brilliant move what a move this is this is so good he is attacking this pawn queen d3 and it's li these little moves which make it so difficult to beat him the queen is very well placed it's looking at the pawn it's also you know just around the white's position white camp and here levan pansulai now looking to move his knight he plays his knight to g5 and he tells magnus that your f7 pawn is weak i'm going to take it and now magnus brings his queen back and defends the pawn on f7 yes white is active for the time being but you can always push the knight back with h6 later you can get your knight out from c4 and start pushing your pawn down the board h4 played and i think it's time to get the knight off Magnus taking his time he has 34 minutes his opponent is down to 22 minutes but here Magnus thinks for a full 15 minutes on the clock he's down to 19 and plays at 6 so a move like h6 is a big responsibility why because the king side has become even more soft but with accurate calculation you can take those decisions queen c6 played attacking once again the pawn on 
e4 and there's no real great way to save it if you play queen f4 there's knight d6 and he plays his pawn up to h5 he sacrificed another pawn you could see Levan just taking a glance at Magnus what's your intention here you know one of the things with Magnus is that he never gets intimidated he takes the pawn and he tells Levan prove your compensation why have you given me the pawn h takes on g6 and now of course Magnus shouldn't take with the pawn because it creates more weaknesses but he can take with the queen yes he takes with the queen and of course you can't trade the queens because in the knight end game you are a, not just one but couple of pawns down position is far from over mainly because the white queen is very active and also the king is well defended on g2 queen comes back to f4 looking at the h6 pawn and also at the b8 square queen to d3 and here um, the best move is to simply chop off this pawn on h6 somehow after queen h6 queen f5 black is in the game you know there's no problem here i mean white is in the game after queen h6 but he goes queen b8 which is a big blunder it's a big mistake now the reason why this is a mistake you will understand that although white is going to gain back one pawn here which is an important pawn what he's losing is king g7 what he's losing is that after queen a7 his queen is completely out of the game and magnus now is having a great great move up his sleeve which is easy to miss he's going to sacrifice his knight now it's a very nice position he goes knight e3 look at this move if you go king g1 that is queen f2 queen f1 and queen g2 mate mm, if you go king uh, h2 then again there are problems like for example queen f1 or even queen e2 these are the problems there so the only way to remain in the game is to actually pick up the knight and which he does he takes the knight magnus goes in with a check now look at magnus's calculation this is very important and very very beautiful i'm not going to make the moves on the board but this is something that he has calculated already king h3 queen f3 and the question is why can't you simply take this pawn so the moment you take this pawn black gives a check king has to come up f pawn check king has to go to f4 and queen e4 mate so this is the kind of calculation which makes these long term plans work it's these short calculations which are always difficult so this pawn cannot be won and then you can try and push it down towards becoming a queen he goes a4 Magnus gives a check King g4 and now you want to play f5 and mate him because King f4 there is Queen e4 however this pawn is pinned so you can't push it he gives a check again a nice move forcing him back and Magnus gets up from his chair because it was the 40th move and generally uh, on the 40th move you really want to get up get some refreshments eat something go to the washroom but because Levan made his move very quickly Magnus had to do it in his own time he pushes his pawn to c4 now you'll see that the clock hasn't added 30 minutes that's because the clock will first run down to zero and then the 30 minutes will be added that's how the rule is queen goes to c7 
the queen is still pinning the pawn so there is no mating net as such but now you can go king g6 with the idea of check and f5 yes he plays king g6 brilliant chess by magnus carlsen he gets up from the chair just like his opponent actually magnus gets up from his chair in confidence while uh, his opponent levan pansulai i think is getting up more from the fact that he hopes that this game ends very soon now so magnus is in complete control there are no checks in the position queen h1 and f5 are the biggest threat levan comes back and he must we must see what he plays king h2 played by levan and now magnus can actually give a check here and chop this pawn he does it he gives a check this would be an extra pawn now he would be two pawns up then king h3 and take the pawn on a4 magnus making sure his final calculations are in order he takes on a4 and against magnus such a position is hopeless against any top player but more so against magnus because he is just so good at converting minute advantages and here you have <coughs> two pawns two extra pawns there you see magnus getting up from the chair and levan shaking his hands and saying that well played you can see the nod and uh, sort of uh, the nod of agreement that you played well the players are signing the score sheets and the the arbiter here is along with a piece of paper which magnus has to sign and you will see that magnus does not want to sign right now he wants to maybe discuss it with his father uh, or his team members and then sign it but that leads to the end of the first game of round 2 magnus wins the first classical game he needs now a draw with white pieces which won't be a difficult thing he may even try for a win uh, i hope that you enjoyed this breakdown of this game and we will keep bringing you more such breakdowns for now this is sagar shah signing off bye bye